Aloha Mai Kako, a Komamaita Curtain Call, a weekly program of reviews, previews, interviews, and features of and or with the great art and artists on Maui and beyond. I'm Paul James Brown. Created by a major grant from the National Endowment for the Arts in 2018, Small Town Big Art was a pilot project in partnership with the County of Maui and Hale o Ike Ike at the Bailey House Maui Historical Society, which paired artists with community members to develop art installations in Wailuku rooted in Mary Cabena Pukui's Olalo Noyao, Hawaiian proverbs and poetical sayings. That project was so successful, it needed to be spread across the entire county. Maui Public Art Corps, a 501c3 tax-exempt nonprofit organization, was founded in 2020 to connect people, place, and story through the development of exceptional public art is the answer to that need. The original project, Small Town Big Art, along with its reincarnation as Maui Public Art Corps, has been blessed by the inspired leadership of its chair and founder, Kelly McHugh White. I cannot find the accolades in my vocabulary for what a truly remarkable public art program this is. She has found the formula for creating contemporary public art of the highest quality without the controversy so many public art projects have suffered throughout the country. It's all about the process she has developed that ensures both community buy-in and artistic excellence and satisfaction. It begins with a worldwide request for proposals. This was selected artist Oscar Lett's initial drawing with that submission. Then a jury of community members reviews the submissions. The selected artist then has a process of community education, quote, project development to infuse the proposal in Kahului history, culture, and sense of place, ultimately resulting in a freely accessible work created through community engagement, unquote. Last Saturday, the Kahului mural project inspired by a talk story between Women Helping Women Lifetime Achievement Award winner Nani Fe Padmanan and Pualani Enos, who teaches at UH Manoa Matsunaga Institute for Peace and provides consulting to Hawaiian nonprofit and small businesses leaders who have cultural and Aina-based social justice missions, and created by internationally renowned muralist Oscar Lett, was unveiled in a ceremony at its location behind Ceramic Tile Plus and exclusively yours at the intersection of Kaumanu Avenue and Kahului Beach Road. Despite the wind and the rain, Uncle Bill Garcia, the kuma for all the projects back to the beginning, offered several pule, which many in the audience were familiar with. In the story, Ms. Padmanan revealed to Ms. Enos only two generations ago, members of her family were executed and tortured for speaking Hawaiian. Her family would speak Hawaiian to each other, but secretively. She talked about how she was punished in school for saying even one word of Hawaiian, like pow. She was never taught Hawaiian, but her children and grandchildren, because of the Hawaiian Renaissance, which began in the 70s when the dignity of the culture and the Hawaiian people began to be recognized in music, dance, and language, were taught Hawaiian. Since that time, there are now Hawaiian immersion schools where all subjects are taught in Hawaiian. Halau are everywhere. The 61st anniversary of the Mary Monarch Festival, a celebration of old and new Hawaii, through Hula, named for the late 19th century king of Hawaii, David Kalakala, who was a champion of Hawaiian culture and the arts, has just completed. Ms. Lett said, quote, what resonated most deeply in Nani Fe's narrative for me was the way the language transcended generations, experiencing a beautiful resurgence through her daughter and granddaughter's era, unquote. The mural is a depiction of Ms. Paglinwan listening to her daughter, Naomi Manuel, speaking to her in Olelo, Hawaii. Originally, it was thought Ms. Enos and Ms. Paglinwan would be the models for the mural. However, during an early meeting with all of the project participants, Ms. Enos, in reply to Ms. Lett's request that she and Ms. Paglinwan act as models for the mural, generously suggested it would be more appropriate for Ms. Paglinawan's daughter to be the model. So that is who the viewer will see. In her discussions, Ms. Paglinawan emphasized her multi-ethnic background and that of her ancestors as well. The viewer will note her eyes. She refers to them as her white eyes. 
Ms. Paglinwan said she was too white to be accepted by the Hawaiians and too dark to be accepted by the Americans and Europeans. Other features of this mural include the endemic Palapalai fern. It is the favorite plant of the family and has become the artist's as well. It is a reference to Ms. Paglinwan and what the fern symbolizes, new life and new beginnings. During video conferences while the project was being developed, Ms. Paglinwan used the Palapalai as a backdrop. Another attribute of the work is the endemic lehua, the flower of the ohia tree. According to Professor Kalana Silva of the University of Hawaii Hilo, the ohia tree is the first tree to spring up from a recent lava flow. It's for that reason, when Hawaiian is spoken, the people are mentioned as skilled, strong, and beloved. They're often referred to as pua lehua, or lehua flowers. They, like the lehua, have a kind of resilience, strength, and grace about them. This is the perfect symbol for Ms. Paglinawan. She is a member of the National Indigenous Women's Resource Center, Inc., a Native-led charitable organization dedicated to ending violence against Native women and children. She is co-founder of Pohana O Na Vahine and has been an advocate in the domestic violence movement for over 40 years. Although she retired, she works part-time for Women Helping Women, an organization that has provided direct intervention, advocacy, and prevention for victims and the families of domestic violence since 1977 as a shelter worker providing virtual counseling sessions. She has extensive experience facilitating women's and men's groups, advocating with women and the Maui Cor Community Correctional Facility, and through drug treatment services at the Malama Recovery Center, working in the TRO department and providing crisis intervention. She also taught in elementary school. She represents the voices of families of missing and murdered indigenous women on the National Indigenous Women's Resource Center's Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women's Family Advisory Group. There is no one more deserving of this recognition and honor. She was touched her daughter was included as a model for the painting and proud of her daughter's ability in Olelo, Hawaii. The viewer will also note the exciting diagonal slashes near and across each of the subjects. They look almost like Ms. Lett had a giant paintbrush and pulled it across the work. They add motion to the work. Maui's public art collection will soon become, if it hasn't already, one of the must-do visitor experiences. These works of art illuminate, illustrate, and educate about Maui and its ancestry. They are a marvelous community cultural asset. I hope the owners of the building will consider providing lighting for the piece. It will give everyone on Maui the opportunity to experience this most extraordinary work of art. The Schaefer International Gallery of the Maui Arts and Cultural Center is presenting a world-class exhibit of selected works of one of the key figures of 20th century art, Max Ernst, together with some of the tapestries of Yvette Coquille Prince, who worked with Picasso and Chagall, as well as Ernst. I'll have a full review next week, but in the meantime, hurry over to the gallery and drink in this amazing show, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., Tuesday to Saturday. Well, that's Curtain Call for this week. Mahalo for tuning in. I'm Paul James Brown, Maui Strong. Ahui ho!